Hello and welcome to Dyson Demons, I'm Emma and in this video I'm going to show you the second half of the tutorial for how I painted the Ballistis Dreadnought from the Leviathan box that Games Workshop sent to me. And if you have seen the first video, you have seen me paint uh, this, this part of the model where I have a um, sort of bluish Tetris blocks uh, and then you have this sort of flaming symbol. And this was originally just intended to be a one-off for a fun project. And when I had painted it and seen what it looked like, I was just going to strip it and do something completely different with the model. But I ended up liking it so much that I decided to paint the entire thing. And so because I thought it would be cool with a little bit of variety, also color-wise, I decided to do one arm, as you just saw, in uh, blue with a flaming symbol. And then I decided to do the other arm with a um, orange and red sort of blocks or Tetris blocks and then a blue symbol for water because the whole original idea was that I wanted to have as much contrast as I could in the paint job uh, so that's why I had both the square blocks like the Tetris blocks and I had the more organic swirls of the flame and then I had both blue and red so they're quite contrasting colors and then I also had um, now the symbol for a flame and the symbol for water so I think I've, I've tried to come up with as many ways of adding uh, of adding contrast in this paint job as I possibly could figure out how to so um, as I said this was just intended to be a paint, you know, a quick paint painting experience or a experiment really. And so I don't, I'm not going to be doing this over an entire Space Marine army. It, it's fun and I really like the end result, but it also takes a long time to do. So I'm not going to do this over an entire army. And so instead of stripping this model or just leaving it in a cabinet to collect dust, I have decided to donate it to the 40k event, uh, 40 hours of 40k, that raises money for the charity CALM. It stands for a campaign against living miserably. And so it is a suicide prevention campaign really. So it works to help people with mental health issues. And as a person who has struggled severely with my mental health, I completely stand behind that. And I am really excited that I'm going to be able to um, yeah, to use to use my my uh, to, to use my painting to perhaps just contribute a, just a tiny bit uh, to helping someone uh, with their mental health issues. So I really appreciate the opportunity to do that. Okay, so enough of me rambling about this. Let's get to the painting, right? So I start off with the weapon arm, as you can see, I have it primed using the White Scars Primer and I have ju I'm just using a completely ordinary pencil to draw in the uh, designs. You could also do this using a brush, but I find that a pencil is, after all, easier to control and it's also very much easier to correct your mistakes. I started out drawing something else and I didn't like it, so I just took an eraser to it and tried again. So by far using a completely ordinary pencil is way easier if you are trying to sketch in a design and you're not quite sure exactly what you're going for and how you want the proportions to be and so on just use a just use a pencil i mean it's very simple very easy and then you can uh, just redo the entire thing using a brush later on and as you can see how while I'm sketching in the design, I'm trying to go, like I said before, for a look that has a lot of contrast to it with the sort of Tetris-like blocks in the background and then the more organic swirls here in what is supposed to look like a stylized version of a drop of water or something. And once I was happy with the sketch, I took my uh, brush and some black Legion contrast paint and I just well, retrace the entire thing just to make sure that it would be easy to see the design through all the colors once I start blocking in the base colors. As you can see here, I am not being overly careful with this. This is still something in the way of a sketch or something. There is There are going to be a lot of layers on top of this, so I don't really mind if it's not too precise. This is just something for me to work on of, and if there are some inaccuracies or something, it, it's completely fine. I do, uh, unless I did something that I really, really didn't like the look of, I don't, I don't bother going back and correcting it at this stage. This is just a sketch. Then once I think the sketch looks the way I wanted it to, well, it actually didn't at this point. I didn't like all the uh, swirls or the shapes inside the water drop, but I didn't want to go back, as I said, and redo the whole thing because I thought as soon as the whole thing is, is covered in, in color, I don't think 
I think it's going to look just fine. Um, so I decided to just leave it as it is. Sometimes you just, instead of fixing every little single thing, because uh, you sometimes just accept, okay, this is where it's at. And it's probably going to look just fine and just leave it as is and get on with the paint job because sometimes you'll just get bogged down in having to redo things over and over and over. So um, the first couple of colors that I'm blocking in here, the sort of Tetris pattern, first was the orange color that is Magma Droth Flame, one of the newer contrast uh, paints from Citadel. And next up I use Blood Angels Red, which is also a contrast paint from the first batch, I believe, of the contrast paints also from Citadel. So uh, these paints, as most of you probably know, don't work too well on a flat surface, at least that's not what they are intended to, uh, for. But I find for stuff like this, where you're going to be doing all sorts of textures or stylistic patterns on top, it doesn't matter too much as uh, and as someone said in the last video actually the sort of unevenness of the of the whole thing makes it look a little bit more believable as a stained glass uh, window design so yeah i guess it's a win-win they're easy to work with and they actually for this particular paint job help with the with the believability so yeah awesome uh, for the water drop, I use two uh, contrast paints, and the first one here is Croxical Scales, which is sort of a turquoise color. Um, it's one of the newer colors, and I really like it. It's just a little bit more of a, uh, it's a deeper variant, I think, of the Athematic Blue, which is also a really cool color. And then for the other uh, bluish color for the water drop, I simply use Talasa Blue, also contrast paint, which is, uh, I think, the most sort of bluish blue of the uh, of all the contrast paints. And I thought it would uh, it would work really well here. To add a little bit more color variety, I decided to go for a green here, and I first grabbed the striking scorpion green, and then I did a quick wet blend with that and the uh, warp lightning, a sort of just darker green color. And that is also one of the things that I really like about the contrast paints. They're so easy to use for quick wet blends. Of course, this type of wet blending are, well, it's not going to win you any major painting awards or anything, but for a paint job such as this, I think it works totally fine. Then I start edge highlighting the Tetris blocks. And for uh, the red, I use a paint from Huge Miniatures called Radar Red. And uh, most of the paints I'm using for the highlights are from Huge Miniatures and they are all of them fluorescent paints, which is really cool because it means they'll glow under UV light. And if you're interested in getting some of these for yourself, I have a link to the Huge Miniatures website and I also have a coupon code that will give you 5% off and also help support this channel. At this stage of the paint job, I'm trying to be a little bit more careful so I don't have to go back and fix mistakes if I don't absolutely have to. At the same time, you don't have to really stress about this because with a paint job such as this, uh, it's not each individual square that is really important. It is what they contribute to the overall look of and feel of the model. So it's the whole thing in its entirety that is going to hopefully look cool and not each little square. So everything doesn't have to be perfect. It just has, they just have to be not so, so shabby that they sort of ruin the overall look. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> when all the red squares are highlighted, I go back over the orange squares using a color also from Huge Miniatures. This one is called Laser Orange and I do the exact same thing. I also use the same orange color to highlight uh, the red squares. And as you can see here, I apply the orange color mostly on top of each of the squares. and. I hadn't really thought about why I did it, but I suppose that was because my sort of gut feeling was that a highlight should be at the top of the square where a potential light source would hit it from above. Um, but I mean, realistically, this just looks like something from uh, the Matrix or something. There is no realism going on here, so you could highlight these any way you wanted to. I just sort of automatically highlighted them from above. Then uh, here I am highlighting the green using a color also from Green Stuff World and this one is called Quantum Green and I try to take care to just hit in each individual little shape here and not get anything in the recesses between them. Um, 
I'm not overly careful with this as I don't think this is the part of the paint job that most people will be focusing on. I am thinking that the, uh, I think the armor plates will be what grabs people's attention. So this doesn't have, have it, this doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be good enough. And I think that is often where uh, sometimes a big a painting project can sort of get you stranded a little bit is when you start start going for perfect instead of good enough and um, just go for good enough and you will be the only person who will ever notice these teeny tiny mistakes that might be there then i am using starfire yellow also a fluorescent paint from huge miniatures and i use that for highlighting the orange squares then for the blue parts of the water drop, I am highlighting that with a paint also from Huge Miniatures called Blaster Blue. And this one is mixed with quite a bit of white because Blaster Blue on its own is not quite uh, light enough to really work as a highlight for Talasar Blue. The turquoise part of the color scheme is highlighted using Vallejo's Aquamarine mixed also with a bit of white. And this color, while I really like it, has the unfortunate, uh, well, lack of fluorescent ability. So it will not glow under UV light, which is a bit of a shame. But on the other hand, I do really like this color. And so I think, after all, the most important thing, uh, thing is that it looks cool under a normal light and not under a UV light. As I still, I have yet to see somebody actually playing a game under a UV light. So I guess it's most important, but uh, still, if I had a lovely aquamarine color that would uh, was fluorescent, I would definitely be using that, but I don't. So I'm using this one from Vallejo. Then I mix in a tiny bit more white, both in the blaster blue and in the aquamarine. And I highlight uh, all again, the uh, each individual shape here in the water drop, just to make sure that it really pops. And lastly, I go back to the Contrast Paint Black Legion and I retrace all the black lines between each of the sort of Tetris blocks. And while I really enjoy edge highlighting for a painting project such as this, I think this is my favorite part because this is where it all stops looking like a little bit messy and comes together and looks I think a little bit cool and stylistic and I just really like that. So I think this is my favorite part, although also a tiny bit nerve wracking because if I uh, if I do something wrong here, it will take quite some time to redo it. Um, but luckily, I think my hand was relatively steady and so I didn't have to go back over the entire thing. And here you can see the finished model. And I have to admit that I'm actually quite proud of it. Um, not just because I like the way it looks, but also because, uh, as I said, it was originally intended to just be a fun experiment, just painting one of the weapon arms and leaving it at that. But actually finishing it, even though it took quite a long time and really tested my patience. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy that I, uh, I just uh, pulled myself together and finished it. I really, I really uh, am proud of that. Also, uh, as you can see here, most of it glows under UV light because I used all these fluorescent colors for the highlights. You'll also notice in tiny green letters, uh, it says um, first on the, the blue leg, it says Vini Vidi. And then on the front, it says Vici. And that is uh, Latin. It's a quote from uh, Julius Caesar. And it means uh, I came, I saw and I was victorious. And I think that that quote uh, really works well with the Space Marines. And hopefully, perhaps it can even work for you if you are struggling with mental health issues and you are joining the raffle and win this, uh, win this model uh, that from time to time, you mean, it can feel like this is a hopeless battle, but you can actually win through. I'm not saying that you can get completely healthy and never struggle again, but there are victories even when it is very dark and seems very hopeless. So I don't know if it works like that or if you read it like that, but that was at least the intention when I painted it. And lastly, but not, certainly not least, uh, I want to thank my patrons who are supporting this channel. So thank you so much to Thomas Masson, to Gwena L, Scott Broadway, Andrew Correa, Anthony Paul Castro, Queen's Wolf, TJ Kubiak, Mandor Project, Starcoin85, Espear, Echinococcus, Firelord21. 
So thank you. And if you want to join these wonderful people in supporting the channel, I will leave a link to my Patreon in the show notes below, where you can also find the link to the huge miniatures website and the uh, coupon to get 5% off. So thank you so much for watching, guys. And remember that you can also follow me as Dyson Demons over on Twitter and Instagram if you want to stay up to date on my painting projects. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.